last time. This did not work, but I have a way around it if we have to. Okay. Um, I'm just getting the data ready and I was afraid that might be a problem. So I think I have another way to get it in. I should have tested this before I showed up this morning. I'd forgotten about this part of the challenge. So what I wanted to do, well, you know what? We may not need it. We'll try to go through. Yeah, I think we can get by. Now, I have not yet moved this over um, to a place where y'all can get to it, but I, I will soon, okay? And um, well, let me open the chat, you go, but you help me manage it too. Hi, Lawrence. Okay, so just to make it clear, we're talking about uh, cleaning data. And uh, if you saw the post that I was promoting from our dear brother Manjanath uh, in India, who's a, a great mentor in his own right, he's done deep mentoring of a lot of people. Um, he wrote a post recently about a, the story of a new data scientist starting in his new role and how he's all excited uh, to start doing some fun machine learning and all of that. And two years later, he was still cleaning data. <laughs> and I, I just made me laugh because it sounded like my some of my other roles. But um, I'll read this, not verbatim, but data dirt can be a pain but the nice thing is each new type of dirt has to be cleaned a new way and once you found typical types of dirt that you have to deal with you can automate the that type of data cleans cleansing so you want to do a good job of uh if y'all ever heard me talk about tom overflow like stack overflow after I got to a certain level of getting help from Stack Overflow, oh, you know what? You go, shame on you. You forgot to tell me to share. I was <laughs> sitting here talking to something I hadn't shared yet. All right. Yeah, let me know when I poo poo like that, guys. Dad, are you sharing your screen? Here, now I'm sharing my screen. So this is what I was kind of reading from, and you can read ahead. But if you automate your data cleansing, um, then when you hit a new type of dirt, it's probably going to shut everything down. And that's just an indication that, oh, we've got a new type of data dirt to figure out how to clean. So the one that I find the biggest travesty is NANS, which stands for not a number. And then we put an S on the end because it's a bunch of not a numbers. And um. But I think when you first get your data loaded, and you can see in this outline over here, I have gone through data acquisition and fake data generation. And then I say um, databases or you know, basically loading the data. And now we have the data loaded. And the first thing I want to do is just get a NAN density on my data frame. So I'm working with a pandas data frame. And by the way, in case you're new to pandas or that's the first time you've heard me say it um oh my volume nadita is my volume too low i certainly can try oh okay good yeah i was probably mumbling i'll try not to mumble um the data frame is Oh, you mean the input volume. Um, now, is everybody else hearing me okay now? But I'll go check my settings real quick. It could be oh, that it uh, lowered. You're, you're, you're clear, you're clear. Uh, yeah, okay. maybe it's a setting. Uh, it's, it's setting on oh, the you were saying that to, you were yeah, saying that to someone else. Okay, yeah. Yeah. excellent. Thanks guys. Okay, good. So um, just think of a data frame as a very, fast method in Python 
uh, using the pandas uh, module, really the pandas library, to work with data very quickly in tabular form. And in, in this tabular form, it's, it's very SQL-like. SQL -like. Each of the columns have a, a, co a column name. Uh, they don't have to, but it's good practice. And you even have index, uh, an index column. But in this data frame, and again, if, you, if you're missing some of the details, don't get weighed down by this. Some, for some of you, this is gonna be uh, very understandable. For some of you, it may be completely new. Just treat it as an introduction and something you will get to know better over time. So for this data frame that I pass into this function, I ask um, of that data frame is null. And this would return a data frame <clears throat> Uh, of rows and columns, a sub data frame that, that has the NANDs in it. And then I'm saying sum that, sum the, basically sum each of the columns now, or each of the rows, now sum that last column. It's a double sum because it, it's a two dimensional table. And then I'm dividing that by the overall size of the data frame itself. So the number of columns times the number of rows. And then I call that my NAND density, I return it, and I find that, oh, I've got almost 6% NANDs in this data frame. Now, this is coming from the famous recurring competition at Kaggle called house prices, and it's, house, it's a regression problem. So now that we have that initial density, how do we deal with those NANDs? Well, um, first of all, many of these are probably explainable because <laughs> now it's okay for me to talk bad about realtors because I am one, uh, even a real estate investor. I don't have my license current. I'm not really doing any real estate investments, but I've done well at that. And now, and by the way, I haven't shared this yet in our folder that I share files with you guys, but I will do it today. I just I didn't have time yesterday. This is my own function that I created to report the number of NANDs for each um, co uh, column and then um, the percent of all NANDs. And then, but the percent of NANDs to all. So this is just saying of those 6% NANDs, how much of that percent goes in here? And so meaning these should all add up to 100% and it looks like they do. But all of these should add up to that almost 6%. <clears throat> Hope that makes sense. And so it repeats that thing I did above. I was just showing how I'd grown the ability of this to analyze the data frame over time. So there's 1,460 records, meaning rows, and 81 features. So of those 81 features, we have this many that have NANDs. And I could change so that it reports the worst one first. And um, what I was getting to about realtors is when they're entering data, they're not most of them are not data scientists like I am. And so if they're entering data about pools and they say, is there a pool? Well, they probably already entered information about its quality and something like that. But they just think, well, no, so I won't enter anything. <laughs> and they don't think to say, to enter the value that they should have entered. Well, how would we know, you know, how what their instructions look like and all that? and as you know, too, if I just start deleting rows and columns that have a NAN in them, I might lose a lot of data. And that's part of the reason I look at it this way. But if I can do a little grunt work, and what I'm about to show you probably would take most of you anywhere from a day to five days. And is that worth it to have 6% more values? Absolutely. We might have lost a lot more Look at this. This is about 16 rows, I think, or more. And uh, excuse me, 16 columns. 
but this might have been spread out. Oh, if we deleted <clears throat> every row, well, if we deleted the pool column, that's that could be huge to our analysis. Um, it could be uh, having the pool could be a negative or a big, a significant negative or positive effect on our predictions. Uh, these miscellaneous features, the same. Um, these garage types, this could be crucial. So, um, I create a new thing too here. I get character Pareto DF. And what am I trying to do there? I'm just trying to say anan equals numpy.nan. And then I'm doing a, a literal, I'm running this guy again to do what? Well, now I want to get it. Um, forgive me. There was a reason I did this and I'm drawing a blank. Okay, we'll move on and I'll figure it out. Let me look at this column in the deep columns in the range. Okay, the values, yeah. Okay, um, let's, this was just another form of check to see if the NANs were in another way. Okay, so now that I have a clue about that, I, I start with, I just decided to start with the worst one. So here it is. Pool QC, and as we go on, I try. I won't try to scroll back up to this <clears throat> each time, but let's go down to the pools first, and you can see the next one. So I uh, forgot to. Oh, there it is. Yeah, we're in the right place. Okay, good. Um, I went to my domain expert, which in this case was the data description .txt file for this competition. And so you can treat this file as though it's documentation or conversations with domain experts. And that pool quality should have values of excellent, good, typical average, fair, and no pool, meaning in a, well, that's what happened. The realtors were too lazy to enter in a when there was no pool. Again, um, realtors would laugh at me if they knew I was also once licensed, but we also find that there is a pool area. And so what we can do <clears throat> is um, perhaps pool area equals zero will correspond to pool QC being NAN. So the first thing I do is make sure there's no misspellings. And wow, look at this, train DF, Pool QC unique. I'm basically this is a cool way to say in this pool QC column, <clears throat> how many unique values are there? Well, look, they had excellent, fair, and good, and no typical averages, but then NANs. Oh, that's interesting. And the pool area, unique values there, well, these would be the square feet of the pools. And so there's only zero and these typical values for pool square feet. Well, then I did a little trick. I said, I'm gonna create a string pool area and I'm gonna convert all those pool areas to a string type as type string. And then I'm gonna create a new column called string pool QC and I'm going to do the same thing to that. Then what I'm going to do is an, what's a, called an aggregation. And these, this is cool because it's very SQL-like. I'm just putting these two strings together into a column I call check. <clears throat> and the way I'm doing the aggregation function between these two columns is just saying, with a space between, join these two col pandas columns or 
We also call pandas columns pandas series. And axis equal ones means don't do it on the row, do it on the column. Axis equal zero would be the row. So look how I did that now. Now I look back to those unique values and I see Nan always goes with zero. Excellent can go with 512, 555. Fair can go with 648 and 519. And good can go with 576, 480, and 738. But we only have zero with Nan. So this explains it well. <clears throat> Those entering data didn't take the trouble to enter NA for pool. And I would go to the creators of the MLS, the multiple listing service, and say, hey, your realtors are causing us real trouble. <clears throat> they're not entering NA when there is no pool. Can you make it so they can't close that entry until um, they, they enter a value there? And the MLS would probably say, hey, the realtors are our customers. And they'll raise a fuss if we do that to them. But, but that's not good data entry. And I might get into a real argument with the guy, but hopefully they would succeed and say, say yeah, okay, we'll do it. But there's a good chance they might not. And you know, say, well, you've automated this now, so just deal with it that way. Okay. <laughs> but I would want to do this check. When I see a NAN, is the corresponding pool area zero? And it must be doing an auto entry of zero unless they enter something. Okay. Now, this note, if we had not done a little investigation, we might have lost the predictive help of pools being present or not. So <clears throat> we've got a train DF, a pool QC, and for that column, I fill the NANs. This, I wish they'd have gone ahead and wrote it NAN, but this is for filling the NANs with an NA. Now, when I run that unique value, you can see that all the NANs we saw above have been replaced with NA. Boom. Ah, nice. Okay, so now we go to the next thing, which is the miscellaneous features. <clears throat> And um, darn, we hit a problem here. I was counting on the old output showing, but the unique values would have shown the same problem where we had uh, these present and NAN. And so <clears throat> there's, um, there's, uh, I, we, once we see this unique, we can also see the length of it because it had quite a few. But there are only 20 non-zero unique values. So there was a combination of zeros and nans this time. So we just do what we did with the pools. I'm going to um, aggregate. Um, boy, I'm hoping those other output cells are showing, but if they're not, we get to go learn some Kaggle cool stuff because we'd have to just go uh, download those two data files, bring them in here and start running these cells. We might do that anyway. And by the way, there's no way we're going to get through this session in one hour because data cleaning. Um, oh, and let me let me take a segue here. <clears throat> Please don't expect courses to make you an expert at data cleaning. Now I'm showing you some stuff you can use a lot, but I, I've seen posts by others on LinkedIn complaining about, you know, data cleaning is so important and there's no coursework on it. Well, you know what? That's real life. You can't learn everything in school that you're gonna encounter on the job. Hopefully in school, you learn to learn. And that's really what we're about and integrated is helping each other learn to learn, in my opinion. So how do you get really good at data cleaning if I can't teach or someone else can't teach you everything or 10 other you know, instructors can't teach you everything? You keep getting very good at Python. And within Python, pandas and NumPy. And or what if, if you decide, you know, 
I, I like Python, but I'm going to get, I'm going to make R my primary language. Same thing. You're going to have to learn the tools inside R that will help you get really good at data cleaning. You see, I, I love pandas and I try to use it a lot. I'll sometimes <clears throat> even create my own scaling classes or uh, one hot encoding classes or ordinal encoding classes inside pandas rather than use sklearn. It's not because I don't like sklearn. It's just the I like the way I can write my own routine to manage those actions the way I want. So whatever language you try to program in, just understand the first few times you clean data, it's going to take a bit of challenge to exercise the creativity to get the actions you need, but be persistent and get really good at searching on Google for what you need. So, but for these miscellaneous features, I did the same thing I did above with the pools and it worked out great. And um, let's see, we may, if this one is, okay, I think we're gonna be okay. So we're not seeing the outputs for the miscellaneous, but it, it really turned out the same way as the pools in principle. Okay, so now we look at the alleys. Well, and by the way, we're just going in that Pareto order. Alleys was the one that had the next most missing values. And so we find that they should have been gravel, paved, or NA. And sure enough, <laughs> For the NAs, we have NANs. <clears throat> well, I just do a quick check. I'm leveraging from what we saw before. I fill all my NANs with NAs, and now all the unique values are have no NANs. So all the NANs should have been an NA. Then we go to fences. And this is important because Americans are into their dogs and, uh, you know, or they just want privacy, one of the two. That's why. Uh, we have fences in this country. Not very neighborly, but if you have a dog and you, and you don't want your dog pooping in your neighbor's yard, it's a good thing to have, or you want privacy. So the fence, well, what were the unique values for fence? And look, we had all these, uh, um, what do you call that? Well, Short short terms for each of these words, but all no no NAs, but a bunch of NANs. So again, we just try doing the fill, and yep, all the NANs went away. So we'll we'll march ahead quickly here. Fireplace quality or not? <clears throat> and by the way, we can talk a little bit about this as we go. We could have ordinal encoded some of these, but for the, um, and, and we could have ordinal encoded this, uh, that's great. But some of these we may have to one hot encode, but I'm still seeing a bunch of ordinal encoding here. And again, for the fireplaces, we had NANs and no NAs. So, however, in this case, there was also a fireplace quality. And so I just made sure that when the fireplace quality was present, there should have been an NA. So I, I do the string trick again and aggregate them. And I find that zeros always go with NAN and the numbers always go appropriately um, with the fireplace. And this is the type of fireplace material, okay? What it's made out of. Okay, so uh, we made this conclusion, which is great. That means we can do a fill in a for the NANs. And now we have only these unique values. I, I hope this is feeling repetitive, but when you have repetitive in data cleansing, it's good news. Now, okay, this was probably the hardest one, but it involved what I came to the conclusion of is lot frontage was really important to, to this uh, data set. 
and that I was going to need to do some predictive values. Uh, so we'll come back to this one because um, it it's huge. It didn't have as many missing values, but it was a really important one that required filling in the missing values with predictive modeling. Okay, now garages also got complicated and it looks like I did not try to rerun those while the data was missing. So as I got into garage related data, there were several of those. We had the garage type, the garage year built, the garage finish, um, how many cars it could hold, its area, uh, its quality and its condition. <laughs> but I hear, <laughs> I'm sensing some low lying fruit. Uh, that is fruit that is easy to pick, that is likely an easy pick. So I'm betting that NANs only occur when there is no garage based on our previous trends with this data set. And so I do this little trick. I get the column names that relate to garages and I, just to make this look cleaner, I say, I've got a garage data frame, which is a subset of our training data frame and it's these column names that I've put in this array, <clears throat> the garages. And then I say, I want to see all the columns here that are in A for the garage DF. That this is a little trick. We call this our data frame, but we call, when we do something like this inside these square brackets, we call this our mask. And I'm doing a mask to say, I only want to see the NA rows for any column. And look at this, this is all NANs for zeros. So what do I do now? Take all those column names and I aggregate them like I did before, but now I'm doing it for all of those column names and I'm looking for unique values in this string check, new string check column. And sure enough, every time someone didn't enter NA for no garage, it had zeros for these numerical columns, the area and the number of cars it held. So this was a big win. Um, we can make an, a safe assumption that when garages have zero area and hold zero cars, there's no garage. So what do we do for those column? Now I reduced the column names. I, I just, just to be extra safe, I probably didn't need to do this. Let me get where we can see all of this. Okay, here's that original number. And notice I just left out the two with numerical values. So I'm only looking at those columns that showed us they had the NANs in them. And I filled the train DF with those column names to be in a for the NANs and boom, we're done with the garage. And you could recheck the Pareto each time to see that, wow, we're making a serious dent all on all of this. Now basements are a huge thing uh, in my country. Uh, if you're in an area with a low water table, you're not gonna have basements. If you're in an area of the, a cold area of the country, and um, the water table's low enough, people love to have basements because you don't have to heat that as much down there. And it's a, of course, it can be a really good living space, but then it's a challenge for windows and safety in case there's a fire. So there's a balance, but having a good basement can be a huge thing. So I take everything to do with basements here. These are all the columns that have anything to do with basements. And <clears throat> I create my basement data frame. And first I just look to see uh, how many uh, rows are, have this issue with the, have NAs in them. And there's 39 of them, like we saw above. But I see there's this special case where something went a little wrong. And again, lazy realtor thing. Um, I don't know why this one got a NAN, but we what we do 
is we, we see in here, we've got some other cases where there is an N present, but it's not completely filled in. So <clears throat> we'll say, well, let's check this one. Let's check this with one other view to make things simpler. And so now I'm just saying, uh, the first thing I wanna do is to print the columns, the column names. And what were the column names? Um, oh, they're the ones that I just defined. I, I should have said basement column names or um, garage column names just to be safe, but I was going through this quickly. That would have been a, probably a cleaner practice, but column names was last defined to be um, all the basement related column names. <clears throat> so, um, Again, I do this thing where I just remind myself what are the current column names, and then I check for unique values here. Again, this is my check uh, data. Check, check. Yeah, this is this is a temporary data frame, and I just called it check. I should have said check underscore df too. But then I'm going to make string check a combination of all those. And I look to see, let me just double check something up here. Yeah, I just wanted to do this thing where I say, okay, when I do this check data frame and look at my string check, I only have these three unique uh, rows. So I've got where it's um, the NANs and it's got the values that should have been entered. Here's just this one NAN and then this one NAN here. So it's just like what we saw above, but I was just double checking to make sure this was a summary of what I was seeing up here, okay? And then, um, so now I go to work. <clears throat> I think, okay. Here's all the column names for basements again. Here's my basement data frame. Here's my check that I just did again. I print that again. Um, I don't know, I'm trying to remember why I did this twice. Um, yeah, I just somehow did this twice and I don't remember why. So of all the basement stuff above, there are only two rows that receive NAN values that we might not understand. Let's see if we can rectify those two values. So for the second unique row above that has a NAN in it, we find that NAN applies to basement finish type two. And there is a square footage reported for basement finish SF2. Well, what do we do? Pretending that we're creating a model that we can use for all new data that might flow in we wanna be able to automate this type of cleaning as much as possible. So for one value out of 1,460 and having no great way to know, let's assume finished types with some square footage are unfinished to be conservative. Meaning if there's a NAN for that finished type, let's say it's unfinished. And then we can automate that. And it's a good and safe assumption. I'm always about conservative. You don't want to overestimate here. And then in my opinion, <clears throat> now for the second unique row above that has a NAN in it, we find that that NAN refers to basement exposure. This is meaning, is there a part of the ground that's carved away that's significant? And this feature is for d degrees of exposure. So given the trends of data entry into this data set, it's safest to say that NANs for basement exposure are no, or no exposure when there's a basement square footage. And so now we can automate that too. Again, it's, it's probably, you can't work with a NAN because it's not a number and all machine learning problems are math problems that require numbers. So we're taking conservative estimates and they're probably going to be right most of the time. Thus we'll write code to automatically handle those three cases. NANs become NAs, where all square footage numbers are zero, and they become the lowest condition when any of the square footage columns are non-zero. So that's what all of this does, and you'll be able to look at that. 
And then now when we rerun our basement surveyor to check if everything got cleaned correctly, that's running these same checks above, we don't have any cases. And voila, when we look at that, this is a trick to just say, well, basement DF this, nothing's appearing under these column names. So that means we got it all cleaned. Now, I want to pause here. We'll continue from here next week, but I want to take questions for the rest of the time. And you can put them in the chat too, but it's okay to come off mute. And I'll let, uh, by the way, I'm the teacher, but you go is the boss. So you go can, will tell me which questions to answer. Okay, now if, in case there's no questions, because you know you're gonna be looking at the code and playing with it, please give me feedback. And don't ever be afraid to say, Tom, uh, the section where you talked about this, that was hard for me. Or some of you could say, can we go back and look at another section? Please, anything's fair game. We want to get better at this. Okay, Aziz, I'm ready to hear you. Can you hear me now? Uh, talk really loud. Uh, can you hear me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you uh, for the presentation. But uh, one thing I would like to point out is that um, I think this may though no, this is foundational machine learning, but it's may it somehow seems uh, a little bit advanced. I don't know how some people will feel, but this is how I will see it. Maybe uh, maybe some of this code may be uh, a bit more uh, explained. Like maybe you can add more comment. Maybe when people are checking it later, or maybe by saying that uh, the reason why these have a double quotation or something or something like that. I'm just trying to, to point attention to that, I guess. No, the, this is a good comment and let me explain. I want y'all to think about it this way. Let's pretend you're all on uh, one of those fun shows like American Ninja or, or whatever. And uh, this was a, but this was an obstacle course, but it was a mental one. And what I've done is given you a first tour. When I share this uh, notebook with you guys, you want to get the real data and start playing with it. And what I'm gonna do before I share it is make sure the data will load <laughs> from above. And I'm gonna, I'm going to restrict it to just this section, the data cleansing section. Um, and so this is my way of also answering what Lawrence is saying. Is there any resource to learn how to function or uh, for functions or data cleansing and, and uh, what we just did? Now, you may be thinking, yeah, but I, I'm confused and I totally sympathize. But how do you get over the hump? with what I've just shown you, you start playing with this notebook after I share it. And what I'm trying to say, I don't know if you guys have been in this situation, but you, you listen to a lecture and you're a little confused, but you have your notes. And then you get the homework assignment and you're using your book, which in your case is gonna be uh, Google searches and, and a lot of those landing on Stack Overflow or documents for documentation for pandas. And now you're trying to work back through this. And I would say you have two homework assignments in there at your own discretion. You make sure you can go through this data set for this Kaggle house prices advanced regression. You make sure you can go through it and understand what I've done. And then you go to a whole new Kaggle problem that's got similar dirty data and you use these techniques to help you there. In other words, I've just given you the introduction. When you start putting these things into practice, that's when the real learning happens. You just listening to my introduction here, that, that's kind of hard. I agree, it, it is kind of hard. I wanna show y'all too. We just got to a point, look at, I, I left lot frontage because we knew we had to do some uh, predictive work there. 
but we only have three more areas uh, to cover when we get together next week. And then what we can do is try to do some real time uh, data cleaning on another data set. And, but guys, we could go 10 weeks straight on data cleaning before you would probably start to feel like it's comfortable. Again, I wanna encourage you, take what I've shown you as an introduction. Once you get, and Hugo will send out a message to y'all when he knows I've loaded this, uh, this uh, notebook into the location that you guys can get it at and then practice with this data set then look for other data sets on Kaggle that you can practice cleaning then you're probably becoming a good beginner a, an advanced beginner and that's a good place to get i hope what i'm saying is helpful um there's there's just not a magic pill you can swallow to make you good at data cleaning i'm giving you a survey a flyby and um i think if you use if you use what I've showed you today as notes for how to clean other data, it'll it'll be a helpful start. But I'm guessing many of you are still confused about these pandas operations. First time I started with pandas, I was too. But you'll as you practice with pandas, um, you might want to uh, get a pandas course, a free one. Um, Maybe what we want to do, since you see me doing so much cleaning in pandas, maybe what we want to do is uh, have a pandas course after we go through some data cleansing. Hugo and I will work that out with all of you because it's just our desire to help you. So I hope this is making sense. Please, when Hugo sends you that, make sure you get a copy of this notebook and you start playing with these functions and then as soon as you have a feel for how to use them, go to the thank you, Abdullah, Abdullah Haidt. And, and let me know if y'all correct me when I don't say your names right. Um, yeah, we just need to get to a place where you're comfortable with these functions and understand what the, really understand what they're doing. Lawrence, did that help? And then also Aziz, did that make sense? Yeah, absolutely, it does. Thank you. Okay, good. I just, I wanna, it, it, you'll notice I use a lot of athlete analogies with uh, data science, learning and growth. And why? Because th there's, there is such a thing as mental conditioning. <laughs> and uh, you guys ha don't have to become sprinters or marathoners, you have to become ultra thoughters. Okay. This is ongoing lifelong learning. Even if you master everything I showed you this morning over the next time period of anywhere from a week to three months, and you say, Oh, now I really understand it. I'm so glad, glad I went through that. Well, there's going to be times in your career where you haven't cleaned data for a long time. You want to make sure you save these notes. And, and go back because you will probably have to review in the future. Uh, that's why I write those. If you've seen my recent SQL post, I bemoan that, um, gosh, I, I don't get to use SQL enough to, to where I, every time I have to go back to it, I have to review. Well, that's why I was a real stickler about creating those images. If you've seen my posts on the, the SQL sprints, and I'll show one right now. Uh, this was super helpful to me. It's, I, I realized it's got some weaknesses. I, I left out the top function for the select level, but um, I was in a, an interview not long ago where they were testing my SQL skills and I actually bombed a kind of a simple question because I forgot how to use SQL queries like a calculator. For example, if I've got a count from one query and in that same query, I do another select with you know combinations of this stuff below, I can get another count and then I can do a calculation between those two counts, but I also have to have another select statement. And uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. This is kind of cool. And I, I'm just giving you an example. Tom has to review too is what I'm really getting at. 
Oh, I keep bringing up the wrong terminal window. So this is uh, SQL Server Express, and boy, I bet this looks tiny to y'all. So let me. Nope, it's not going to do it. Let's see. View. Zoom in. Make this as big as we can here. You zoom in. Well, I figured, okay, can I use a SQL command line like a, a calculator? Well, I sure can. And in fact, it's, it's kind of pleasant. I still have to write select, but I can go four times five times 10. Oops. And I, I could go on and on and on. Now I hit this. Oh, I didn't get my answer. Oh, that's because I'm on command line. Boom. And well, you might think, well, Tom or dad, whichever you're inclined to call me. When you, you have the Python interpreter open, you can do that. But yeah, but um, if I try to type five times, and I, I can't do multi-line. Here I could lay out a really long, uh, elaborate calculation like, a, like SQL queries tend to be. And I can still use this as a calculator, but it, it improves the readability of that like if I had several lines. So I could literally have um, to, more to my point earlier, uh, select, and then I've got to select with actions and uh, times select with actions for, a, you know, excuse me, I should have put that in the parentheses, select, and then I've got the actions for the select or the statements, I should say. And now, as long as I'm returning two aggregate things like a count or a min or a max, or you know, they, they can be any of those, I can affect this calculation that way. And boom, but I I really uh, messed that up and I just hadn't ever done that because I'm always pulling query results into Python automatically and then going from there. So uh, you find little tricks and ways to keep your ultra thoning uh, improving over time. And that's why I'm emphasizing get into this thing and play with it. And we really got to go uh, so we can make Guy's class. I hope you all go to Guy's class next. See you there. And I'm going to stop abruptly. Sorry for that. But y'all, you can always ask me or you go questions on the Slack channel. Take care, guys. Right. All right. Thank you. Then, um, so for everyone that is on the call this morning or afternoon, depending on where you are, I'm going to send you a mail um, with the collab once I get it from them, and I'm also going to send you a schedule. You know, we said we're going to have a weekly review. So for those of you who can make it, I think it's going to be a Friday. Um, we will probably have a weekly review. That'll be at the end of work. So I think that would be GMT, maybe 6 p.m. GMT-ish, all right? And 7 p.m. GMT-ish. So if you can make it, we'll be glad. And we will just review it together. So um, we are going over to the advanced machine learning class right now. And I hope to see you there because that's like where you're headed to you know, when you're done with the machine learning foundations, but hey, no pressure um, if you don't want to, you know, jump ahead, but it'll be great to have you in the advanced machine learning class. All right, so um, the link again is on our link tree if you want to join, but if not, say, we'll see you on um, Friday when we have the review, because we'll just review this and um, we'll review the homework. So but because this is the first, um, session and really want you to get a hand of this, we will extract the homework from this first session. So it wouldn't be like we needed to go to all the resources. So you, you'll get it in the mail as soon as we are done from here. All right, so I want to take any questions if you have, or if not, then we will adjourn this session till next Saturday. So if anyone has any questions, we would like to take them.
Okay. So thank you guys. Uh, you get the recorded. Uh, yes, the advanced ML class is a different link. You would find that on our link tree. I'll just put our link tree in the chat. That's L I N K C R S E E E slash C Q A N. Yeah, so that's so sorry. It's real M L A I, not L A A I. So I'm just going to change that. M L A I. Yep, so that's it. So when you click on the link, just select. The um, you see it's called automated machine learning pipeline class. So yep, just select that. It's happening right now. Um, Three p.m. to four p.m. GM. So that's the time you see on that entry. So thank you guys. We'll reach out to you immediately after this session with the links to the the collab notebooks and every other information that you need. All right. So. See you guys. Um, see you guys. That will be Friday. Friday. All right. Thank you.